Hello everyone. I'm going to talk about stability using eigenvalues and more. And I would like to discuss um, in this video time, uh, linear time invariant systems and linear time varying systems. And I bet you are going to learn something new. To begin with, let's look at this linear time invariant system. Basically, in the next slide, what we are going to discover that eigenvalues of this matrix A plays an important role about the stability of the equilibrium point of this dynamical system. In this case, equilibrium point X being zero, let's say. All right, um, the importance of eigenvalues on the stability is coming from the solution of this linear time invariant system. Basically, if you solve this, you are going to obtain this matrix exponential multiplied by the initial condition. Now, this video is not about computing e to the power of 80, this matrix exponential. And I am in my channel, I am only covering what I use most of the time for myself in research. And in 99% of the time, I don't compute this matrix exponential. But even if you want to compute, I can do a, a different video. Let me know in comments. Basically, there are three common ways to compute e to the power of 80. One of them is using this Euler's expansion, ai, ti, and i exponential from i equals to 0 to infinity. The other one is finding si minus a, s is the Laplace variable, taking its inverse and finding inverse Laplace transformation. And the third, me third method is applying this beautiful transformation. Here, basically, e to the power of 80 equals to this matrix M multiplied by uh, matrix exponential e to the power of dt and M inverse. And in MATLAB, if you write this comment, you are going to get this model matrix and the diagonal matrix. Model matrix basically stores eigenvectors of each eigenvalue of this matrix A. All right, let's look at now two examples. Let's say I compute the solutions, right? I find e to the power of 80. For the first case, let's consider a matrix like this. And if you find the eigenvalues, you are going to see that this matrix will have eigenvalues minus one and minus two. Now, um, when you compute e to the power of 80, why? Because you need it to find the solution. You are going to observe something spectacular. Basically, e to the power of 80 will be composed of bunch of terms, but their common denominator is that minus 2, minus 1, minus 2, minus 1, these terms will be directly linked with these real eigenvalues of the system. Now, the, for the second observation, let's say we have this A matrix, minus 1, 2, minus 2, 1. In this case, eigenvalues of this matrix is complex. It has this minus 1 real part and this imaginary part. Now, let's say you use one of these three methods to find e to the power of AT. You are going to observe that, you know, you have some cosine and sine terms, but the real part of these eigenvalues will pop up once again on this e to the power of minus 1 t term. All right, what I am trying to say directly is the following. You may have your matrix A may have bunch of eigenvalues, in this case 4. You are going to see that on these exponential terms, the real part like in here, real part of these real eigenvalues directly pops up on these exponential terms. Or if you have a complex um, eigenvalue on the left-hand side, its negative real part will pop up on this exponential term, like in here. So, as you know, when you have a matrix e to the power of at that has all these terms that decays to zero, then we say the, the x that equals to ax is globally asymptotically stable or exponentially stable. Now, uh, for linear time invariant systems, uh, you know, they imply, you know, asymptotic stability and exponential, exponential stability are the same. 
Um, for nonlinear systems, this is a different story. You can check uh, my uh, video, so called, on my channel, um, Lyupanov Stability and More. So, to summarize, we say x that equals to ax is globally asymptotically or exponentially stable when the real part of all eigenvalues of A is negative, which we use this notation for all eigenvalues. You may have an A matrix, which is 10 by 10, 20 by 20. Go to the MATLAB, just simply write IC A. If you, when you look at the eigenvalues, if all the eigenvalues are on the left half plane, meaning that real eigenvalues are negative and complex eigenvalues will have negative real parts, that's it. Your system is global asymptotically or exponentially stable. Now, um, we should define um, global stability and unstability as well. X that equals to AX is globally stable when real part of the eigenvalues for repeated eigenvalues are strictly less than zero and for non-repeated eigenvalues can have basically zero um, real part. Again, these requir requirements for repeated eigenvalues coming from the solutions, right? We write the solutions, observe. Basically, repeated eigenvalues are generally, they are multiplied by terms like t, for example, this multiplied by t. So if this is not negative multiplied by t, then the solution may diverge. So basically, this is a requirement for repeated eigenvalues. And we say x that equals to ax is unstable otherwise, meaning that you may have all, a lot of eigenvalues on the left half plane. If you only have one eigenvalue, that is on the right half plane, then this matrix will have that e to the power of t term. All the terms will diverge to zero. This will uh, basically go to infinity. Your a to the power of a t matrix will blow up. So we don't want any eigenvalues with positive real parts. Likewise, when we say otherwise, uh, when you have let's say real part of the repeated eigenvalues equals to zero, this can also result in instability. And uh, I would like to focus on global asymptotic and exponential stability because, you know, you may have an open loop system which is unstable or globally stable, but at the end of the day, by designing a feedback controller, you would like to stabilize the system. So eventually you would like to make the resulting A of the closed loop system global asymptotically and exponentially stable. And um, you can uh, look at my video on my channel, so-called control state and output feedback control of linear systems, how we, you know, stabilize um, systems. All right. <clears throat> so eigenvalues are very useful, you know, when we deal with linear time invariant systems. And the natural question is, what, can we apply the same principle to linear time invariant time varying systems? I would like to show you a very famous example in the history of control systems. Let's look at this linear time varying system. We have a time varying matrix A and let's say it has this structure. Now, if I take this A of T and find its eigenvalues, and if you have basically, you know, having problems about eigenvalues, you can look at the preliminaries videos on my channel, Vector Operations and Matrix Operations. Basically, you are going to have eigen, two eigenvalues for this time varying matrix like this. And by observation, numerical study, you can say that if alpha is less than two, then real part of both eigenvalues are less than zero. All right, so, well, then can we claim global asymptotic stability or exponential? Here and after, I just would like to use the wording uh, asymptotically. However, when you find the solution to this system, which is finding the solution for time varying systems, uh, is a little bit more painful than linear time invariant systems, but um, we found for this case, basically this is the solution of this linear time varying system. Look at the exponential terms. The system is unstable when alpha is greater than one. But wait a second. Here we say if we use, if we can use eigenvalues to assess stability, we say that you know alpha less than two system should be asymptotically stable. But 
alpha is 1, system is unstable. So let's consider a case, alpha is 1.5, eigenvalue test say system is globally asymptotically stable, but the solution is directly shows that system is unstable. So, so the punchline that you should get from this counterexample is that do not assess stability of linear time varying systems based on the eigenvalues. Okay, this eigenvalue test is only useful for linear time invariant systems, not for there is no theory for linear time varying systems. Instead, like it is done here, you know, to assess stability of linear time varying systems, you can compute their solutions or you can use Lyapunov stability which is the content that comes from this video. In fact, right, Lyapunov stability holds for nonlinear and uh, time-varying um, uh, systems more than linear time-invariant systems. Since this is the case, I would like to talk a little bit about how Lyapunov stability captures time-varying, linear or nonlinear, time-varying systems. All right. So let's say you, you find a positive definite function that may depend on time, this is the Lyapunov function and the state of your system. And it is lower and upper bounded by this class K functions. Okay, what are class K functions? Basically, they are strictly increasing functions and they contain the origin, meaning that alpha is zero is zero. Now, when you compute V dot, time derivative of the Lyapunov, Equation, you need to have a negative um, class K function. If you find that, I will immediately dive into an example here, then you say that the solution is asymptotically, asymptotically stable. Um, uniform. We say uniform asymptotic stability since it also captures the time variations here. Now, if you obtain more than this, basically, if you obtain v dot less than or equal to some positive constant multiplied by v, then you can say exponential stability, again, uniform exponential stability. So, let's consider this um, linear time varying system. I am using, since it's a scalar system, I am using this Lyapunov function candidate, which is certainly positive definite. It doesn't depend on time in this case. And most of the time, it doesn't depend on time as well. In practical applications, when you construct Lyapunov functions, it can be, but this is based on my uh, experience. So in this case, you, you, you need to find an upper and lower bound that doesn't depend on time. Basically, you can consider this class K functions. And you compute V dot. V dot is X multiplied by X dot. I am inserting X dot here and continuing the equations, I separate this into two terms. Now, at the end of the day, don't forget, I would like to obtain an upper bound like this, or maybe like that, that, this, that, that doesn't depend on time. So since time is a positive function multiplied by a positive term, x to the power of two, this quantity is upper bounded by minus x to the power of two. So basically I am dropping on, uh, dropping the time dependence. Now here, initially you can say once you see this, well, uh, basically this origin of this system is uniformly asymptotically stable. But for this example, you can do more than this. You can rewrite this as basically minus uh, equals to minus 4, 1 over half multiplied by x to the power of 2. Basically, this is this here, but now this is the v function, so you can obtain minus 4v, which is this. You can obtain uniform exponential stability for this system. Um, so, um, my point is don't use eigenvalues for linear time varying systems use their solutions or in this case as i showed you Lyapunov stability theory nicely generalizes the linear time varying systems all right now i would like to conclude um, this video with a nice fact that i i cannot say i use it most of the time for linear uh, time varying systems but there were certain instances that this fact 
uh, came up to be handy, so I would like to cover it for you. Uh, it's a beautiful result. Consider a linear time varying system. If a infinity has constant entries and the eigenvalues of this a infinity have negative real parts, then this system is globally asymptotically stable. To illustrate this, let's consider an example like this linear time varying system with this being a of t. I am calculating a infinity, which is nothing but limit t goes to infinity a of t. This term dies out to zero as we go to infinity, likewise this term. So we end up having this uh, time invariant matrix um, as a goes to infinity. And if you check the eigenvalues of this matrix, thanks to the upper triangular structure, you know, you can directly observe from here, the eigenvalues are minus one and minus three. We satisfy this fact, so we can say that this is origin is global, asymptotically stable. Um, basically, um, maybe I've, uh, I covered everything. I would like to mention one more thing with regard to here, with regard to the usage of global asymptotically. Global means basic stability holds for all initial conditions okay and this is the case for linear systems nonlinear systems different equilibrium points may have different stability properties if you're interested i can cover this in a different video and asymptotic stability means basically x going to zero as t going to infinity exponential stability means um, x going to zero as t goes to infinity, but I can quantify this convergence, <coughs> um, basically uh, how fast we converge, we can quantify this convergence. Um, to see this, you can look at uh, this example for the linear time varying system, v dot eventually is uh, upper bounded by minus four v, I would like to rewrite it here. V dot is less than or equal to minus um, four V. So by using comparison principle, you can say that this V is basically is upper solution of V is upper bounded by e to the power of minus four T multiplied by its initial condition. So you can quantify that here system converges to zero or v converges to zero starting for um, this initial condition depending on how fast this e to the power of minus 40 converges to zero uh, the for the discussion about comparison principle and in particular exponential stability i would like to refer you to this video so in this video, I wanted to state more like eigenvalues um, for linear time invariant systems and about the fact don't use eigenvalue test for time varying systems. Um, I think I covered what I needed to cover. If you have any comments, please let me know. Thanks for watching.